we'll, we'll jump into some preventive maintenance, and troubleshooting. Okay. Uh, okay, so from a, a daily, I just want you to do daily, I think weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever. So, um, what do you want to do on a purger daily? You walk by it, I guess, right? You walk by it, maybe. Count your purges. Do what? You keep track of your purges. You keep track of your purges, right? Right. Why, why is that? What's the right number of purges per day? One or two, three, eight. Because your plan probably is. Right? Depends on your facility, right? So that is one of the one of the questions we're going to ask a lot. You know, my, you know, my burger purges twenty times a day. Is that too much? The question is, what's your head pressure? What's your back You know, that's that's the answer is in that, right. not the number. And 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 really, honestly, the it's, it's this the counter counts the number of events. It doesn't count the duration of the event. So it could be, you know, 20, 10, 10 seconds. 20 10 seconds intervals, or it could be, you know. Up to 60 minute intervals, of, you know, twice. So it could be all day, right? So, uh, so yeah, we, we believe in that too. So when you record the non condensable gas activity, which will tell you, there's a counter inside the panel that tells you the number of events. Uh, if you'd like, you can, you know, basically this is an hour meter that ties to that number five solenoid valve. It'll tell you the duration if you want. But it doesn't matter. I think what matters is you log it and then you look for anomalies or things that are out of normal. So if it's every day it's two, 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 and all of a sudden you have to <coughs> that tells you something's going on. Yeah. Doesn't mean purge is not working, it just means something's going on. Let me figure it out. Could mean you got a leak on your low side now and you're drawing a lot of air in. Could mean, oh yeah, something didn't happen to the purge and I need to go maintain it. So uh, yeah, so we recommend the same thing. Record, you know, rec record your non condensable gas activity through the counter or a, a minute, hour. Uh, the newer purgers have kind of a continuous uh, hour meter on the same valve. Uh, inspect for unusual noise, vibration, sights, and smells. Uh, if you walk by a purger and you're overcome by the smell of ammonia, it's not normal. I mean, you can smell what? ammonia. No. <laughs> what? Uh, so one of the advantages, one of the advantages is if you don't do it every day, you notice those things. Um, but so yeah, what we would say is, hey, it's, it's different for different people. The level of uh, you know the smell, right? Some guys smell it as soon as they you know, walk on the, the, the on the grounds of the facility. Other guys have to be right on top of it and next to it before they smell it. But uh, I think I have a video in this. I don't know if I have a video in this presentation. But you know, what does what does a normal release look like? What's a normal release of ammonia look like? Or non condensables look like, right? What does it look like in the bubbler? Uh, if I have the video, I'll, I'll tell you. But what what the difference is is um, Oh, here's, here's a bubbler right here. So uh, here's your bubbler, right? And then what you'll see, it'll look, 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 look like that, right? So you'll see these bubbles coming around. But if you see that same activity, but very, very small bubbles and cloudy looking, right? If it's cloudy looking, then you probably have a high concentration of ammonia in there. And then that's when you want to see what's going on. And that's probably when you, if you do walk by it, then you'll really notice a difference. Yeah. If you walk by it. Ooh, oh, yeah, 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 that's when it's about to jump off the wall. Yeah, shut it down. <laughs> so uh, so in, on the inside of the control panel, uh, when you open up the door, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is uh, your thermostat. That's the, when we, went, when we talked about the fill and cool down stage, that's the thermostat that controls when you move from cool down to separating non condensables. So it does not modulate the temperature of the purger. It just an uh, on, if I'm at temperature and I'm ready to uh, separate non condensable, that's all it tells me, right? It moves from one stage to the other. Now, if this fails, what happens? You're kind of in a permanent cool down. Yeah. Chances are, no working. No working. <laughs> and the timer board, uh, depending on the uh, model of purger you have, this is set up for an eight point purger. You have a 16 point purger, you'll have two of these. 24, obviously three. The counter that we just talked about is this uh, purge gas counter. What that's counting is the number of times that uh, that number five solenoid valve has been energized. And then the time delay. How many uh, know about the time delay? What's there for? I'm not sure. You can shut it what off whenever you're not going to be around. What's that? I'm not sure what it's actually Okay. Good, good. I'm glad I asked the question. Um, so uh, what this is, um, 
this is a basically this is a 60 minute uh, relay relay that's tied to that number five solenoid valve. So if that number five solenoid valve is on for 60 minutes, this delay relay kicks in and de-energizes it. And why why does that make sense? Why would you want that to happen? Could be, yeah, yeah, it could be something wrong with the system, right? It could be, hey, uh, float switch got stuck open, uh, lost power gas pressure, and I'm just you know going crazy. Um, when might you want it to be more than that 59 minutes? When you're first putting your system in. Exactly, when you're first doing a startup, or you popped out a condenser over the weekend to do some service work, you bring the purger back online, every 60 minutes you'd have to walk over the purger and reset it. So there's a switch on the face of this delay relay. What it'll say, I think normal operation and startup. I think it's been a while since I looked at it. Um, so the normal <coughs> operation has that delay, 59 minutes, 60 minutes, and it'll trip it out. If you're in that startup mode or big service work, then you can go into startup and it'll, it'll disable that delay relay. But ideally what it is, it's in a normal position, which is with that delay. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the kind of squishy <coughs> language that we'd like to use. Okay, what's routinely mean? How often how often should you clean the water bubbler at the check valve orifice? Right. You were describing to me earlier. Once a week. Could be once a week. If you've got you know if you're going off of soft water and it's not an issue and you're only bubbling and twice a day, maybe once a month. Uh, you know, it can vary, right? Uh, what's that? I don't think we've ever cleaned our dyno up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you get a new midnight shift operator, he's going to do it on a daily basis. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's there. That, that's why we say routinely. We don't say it's. We're not prescribing a hey, once a month you shall, you must. We're saying hey, whatever your experience is at your facility, base it on that, but do it. You know, just do it whatever you decide is the right amount. A mantra for loss of foul gas pressure. Uh, that's a really easy, effective way to find out if you got a burnout solenoid valve. So um, if you lose a solenoid coil on a purge point, the pressure will drop because you're no longer supplying the foul gas. So um, and sometimes that will result in an inadvertent release of, not, uh, of refrigerant gas because that level drops in that float switch chamber too quickly and it says, oh, I've got gas here. And it does have gas, it's just not non-condensable gas. So um, a simple way to, to look for that is on the front of the uh, control panel, there's the manual purge points. You can go to purge point one, just watch it for a minute, two, whatever you like, move it to three. Now you're watching that gauge on the purger, that's your, your condensing pressure gauge, or your foul gas pressure, I should say. If that drops, on a given purge point, there's something wrong. Could be a burnout coil, could be stuck, closed, <coughs> who knows. But there's something wrong there. Um, so that's when you're monitoring for loss of foul gas pressure. Um, I'm trying to think what else is important about that. Oh, and we'll get into this in a minute, I'll explain this further, is what did we say? So what's what's gonna happen to that gauge, right? Like this, what does it mean? It should be the same. Okay, here, here, this, this will be good enough for our explanation. So the gauge I'm talking about is located here. It's right off the air collection chamber. That's the famous gauge on the purge. That's what you're measuring. So you're really measuring, ideally it's condensing pressure, or very nearly condensing pressure because it's the foul gas that's coming in here, right? Um, when you lose foul gas pressure, what, have, what, what should this gauge read now? It's normally we can get a condensing pressure more or less. When you lose foul gas pressure on a given purge point, what's this pressure gauge going to read now? Suction. Yeah, Close, but not quite. Because you're still on the high, you're really technically still on the high side. Eventually it will get down to suction. It will eventually get down to suction. Before it gets down to suction, what's going to happen? And you know the answer. I know you know the answer. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you 
you explain it to the rest of the group. Oh, the differential pressure. Right, right, right. So what's going to happen is you get down to that. 30. Yeah. Once you get down to that thirty pounds differential, that opens up, right? So what you ideally would see on that pressure gauge is it's going to drop from head uh, condensing pressure, head pressure, to about thirty pounds below that. And what if it does what he was suggesting? Or if it continues to drop below? What does that tell you? The check valve is not open, right? It's check valve not open. So then, that's why uh, routinely, whatever that means to you, you monitor for loss of foul gas pressure. You can check not only the foul gas purge points, but also that that 30 pound check valve is, is working the way it should. Uh, the fuses. Uh, I guess you can check fuses, right? Um, okay. uh, oil, oil, oil. This is a question we get. Uh, one of the nice things about a purger, it's a, it's a great oil pot. It's a great oil pot. I mean, if you need an extra oil pot, just buy a couple extra purgers. Because they will collect oil, and depending on where you're taking your liquid, high pressure liquid from, it makes a difference, but they will collect oil. Better your coalescent filters, all that, the less oil you'll collect. Depends on where your high pressure liquid line is coming from. So, so the question comes again is how often should you pump out a purger? <laughs> yeah, when you need to, but uh, but I would say figure it out, right? So you need to is a little later than you want to. Need is a little later than you want to. So ideally, because I'll explain. We'll do another cutaway here in a minute. Um, because uh, as oil collects in the bottom of the, we'll go back here because it's easier to point. Uh, so what happens now? So you've got, yeah, cool down. you're starting to build up oil across the bottom of this heat exchanger, right? So you're losing your heat exchanging surface. You make it so bad that you are on it. Go. It'll, it'll think that, hey, I'm not cold enough to do my work not cold enough to do your work. So it's going to trip into that cool down mode again. So you're not going to be purging when you're cool down mode. So you, you don't want to get ever get to that point. So the experience technicians, how do you know if you had oil in the oil pot? It's frost level. You see the frost level, right? What are you going to, now if this is an insulated vessel, you don't have that advantage. But what you see down here, you do have a gauge valve that sticks out below the insulation. So one of the tells is, Frost or no frost at the, the gauge point. Could mean you have just a little bit of oil, but you got oil. Um, so you can go through and figure out hey, what's for our plant in this location? Is that pump out and remove oil? Is that uh, once a six months, every six months, once every three months, once? I don't know. Uh, and then um, <coughs> proper operation of all lights. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of, you know, pilot checklist. Hey, Lights work, yeah. Thumbs up. Uh, if, you get, if you decide to go with the uh, beacon pilot lights, you know, you'll see at different stages of the purgers when those lights are on or off. So, all right, so um, now I'm impressed with all my knowledge about purgers. Um, this is a sheet. When I was a rookie, this is a sheet that I developed inside of Hanson because I, uh, I was on calls, getting purger calls from all over the country, the world actually. And it's hard. It's a little easier now because you can someone can take a picture of a purger and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. But back back then, and even still today, well, it's like, how do you know what's wrong with your purger? How do you know what's wrong with your purger? And you're on the call, you can't see what he sees, right? So you're like, okay, so the one I just gave you was, hey, uh, do you have frost at the outlet? This oil drain valve, do you have frost there, yes or no? So what I'm saying is, I, this is my cheat sheet that says, hey, listen, if no frost, it indicates a block of oil. So that's one of the tabs, right? Or so we drained it last night. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah there's no, well, no, there's, no, no, if someone drained it last night, you would, you would see frost, or they brought it back online, maybe that's why it's not working. Uh, no, so yeah, you're right. If, they, if, if there's oil here, you're not gonna see frost, or very little frost on this gauge, right? It depends on the temperature, too. Uh, I'll sell it to you guys, and then you can sell it to him. Uh, no, I'll give it to you. Um, I would, I would, I would actually, I would laminate I, if he wanted to get yes. it to you. Laminate, stick it by the perimeter. Yep. It's a pretty handy sheet to have. Oh yeah. So 
I stood on the wall now. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 kind of the build up of if, once you understand the principles of operational perjure, now with these 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 visual cues, it really kind of helps because now you understand. Oh, yeah, there should be processing. No, there shouldn't be. So here's another example. Um, so you know, we said that how this uh, this metering valve is drawing liquid from the high pressure side to the low pressure side for liquid makeup. So you would expect to see frost here, right? And if you don't see frost here, what does that mean? Well, it means it's either that the fine filters all plugged up. Could mean that solenoid coil is burnt out. Uh, it could mean that there is debris in that metering valve and that you need to flush it, right? Now you can flush it, but then you have to know where to set it again, right? So when you flush a, a tapered seat, you can open it all the way. Hopefully if there's any debris, it flushes it out. Then you can set it. Seat it and then set it to six turns open, and that's the factory setting for the first. And seated is not what that range. What's it? And seated is not what that range. Is it seated not within a range? With a range. Oh, not with a range. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a yeah. yeah. Don't don't use your pliers or your wrench on this. Uh, no, that they're oh so. Actually, it's funny. So you might think you need a wrench because there's a set screw that not everybody sees right away. There's a small hexagon set screw. <clears throat> You need one. You want to loosen that obviously first before you try to adjust it. it makes it a lot easier anyway. Um, the, the gauge that we talked about earlier is condensing pressure. If, you're not, if it's not a condensing pressure, something's going on, right? If it's at suction, you know you're really in trouble. Uh, if it's at 30 pounds below suction, I mean uh, condensing, it may you know, lost foul gas pressure somewhere along the way. Uh, here, you know, we talked about that condensing. It collects, and when we collect enough, it goes to the low side. So this will frost and, un and, and not frost as you lift, you, you expand yeah. a little bit of refrigerant liquid. If this is constantly frosted, always frosted, what, what does that tell you? Check out. Uh, oh, you've got too much liquid in your file <coughs> you're constantly processing liquid. You could have a flooded perch point on a condenser where the liquid's back up. You could have, you know, 100, 300 feet of line across the roof and you're condensing the crap out of it. Uh, I don't know. But if this is always frosted, it's hard to know, right? Um, this is, again, this is high pressure foul gas. If, should this line be frosted? If it's high pressure gas, you, never, you shouldn't see frost on a high pressure gas line, right? But if it's not, that means that there's no flow, which could mean that it's not, it's not processing liquid. I mean, it's not processing non condensable because it's not feeding liquid to the low side anymore. So if this is cold or has frost on it up this line, it may mean that it's, you know you got to figure this out. Uh, it, that's you know again downside of the sheet frost. It may frost, may not be dependent if the heater is working or not. Uh, Thirty pounds. We went over that pretty well, I think. Now, oh, hey, here's a great one. Guy says, "Hey, uh, my printer stopped working." That's that's the call, by the way. If you want to know what the call the day in the life of a hands uh, technician is, it's "Hey, my printer's not working." That's how the call starts, right? <laughs> uh, and then you try to say, "Hey, what's a?" And you go through the same thing. You know, the nice thing about what you guys are all walked through today is it kind of gives you the basis for why, right? That, if you know why, you can figure out how. So um, in this case, uh, the guy calls up and says, "My printer's not purging." Gives me the right answer. Hey, my, my condensing pressure is X, my condensing temperature is Y. I've got at least 15 pounds of non condensable in my system, but I walk over my purger. This float switch is made. I'm not releasing non condensables. What the hell's going on? Interestingly enough, the purger is doing its job. It's collecting non condensables, it's condensing the refrigerant, uh, the non condensable gas, because he's got 15 pounds, he's got non condensables, it's collecting up in here. But not for very long. Why? The, the 225 pound check valve is, is bleeding by and going right back to suction. So he did a great job of collecting them, he just did a great job of getting rid of them. He went right back to the suction. So, what we'll look for is a signs of you might see some frost on the outlet of this if the check valve's open um, or, leaking. or leaking, more likely, to be honest, at one point. Um, there's your one thirty second. Uh, so anyway, yeah, you have, uh, Drake will share this with you guys afterwards, so you'll have it. It's a handy reference. And like I said, at least 
minimize, and now, now that you understand the, I wouldn't give this to somebody who didn't go through the training, because it doesn't, it just it doesn't mean they don't understand what it means or why, or what actions to take. Well, once you go through the training, that's worth, worth having. But, but because that relief valve goes back into the system, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't have a Popeye. Yeah, it's, it's not, it, this is, yeah, this is an internal relief. Yeah. This one is an internal, if you had, if you had, uh, at the same point though, you can connect an external atmospheric relief, and if that had Popeye, that would tell you. That would tell you. But you know, the, the, the kind of the golden rule is try to keep in the system first, if you can, wherever you can, try to keep in the system before you go to the atmosphere. That's why you always see liquid relief valves going back to the system somewhere. Just to keep with everybody's time, um, oh, yeah. we can probably be in here another 30 minutes or so. But if you guys need to go, you said eight to, eight to twelve, so we can. Um, if you need the PDH hours to Rita, just shoot me an email, and I'll give you guys a form to fill out to get those. Um, but, but thanks everybody for coming. If you if you want to just do Q and A for the next thirty minutes, yeah, any, any Q and A about mergers or whatever. I mean anything that, that we talk about, and we'll try to start cleaning up just so that we don't get booted out of here. Go back to this screen first. Thank you. Which one? You want to block? Yeah, that relief check stuff that you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> this one here? Oh. Yeah. Is that uh, that spring operator, right? Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a uh, yes. Check. Basically, it's a loaded check. It's 225 pounds loaded check. It's not a, it's not an atmospheric relief. It's not a a UV. I mean, it's not a U stamp uh, relief. You don't have to replace it every five years. You probably want to replace it more than every five years because uh, I just explained. It to you. Like yeah, it, it's really what it's there for. Right. Which I'm wondering if it may have happened to our auto merger in the oh. past. So I'm wondering if we don't have that problem right now. Yeah, and, and to me, if, if you've got, if you purchase a black ice, I, again, I can tell you, pump it down, just pump it down, let all the ice melt away, start it up again. Now you can see very clear, distinct lines. What happens, yeah. yeah, very distinct lines. I actually have been messing with mine for probably six months now. Yeah. And I, I tore all the insulation off of it so I could see what the fuck did you want to Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to diagnose that a little Well, bit. the cutaway helps, right? And, and, but, but also the kind of the progression helps a lot. I, I kind of want to see what the problem's line. But mm -hmm. I have a little bit of trouble with my sensing bulb. But, but if you go through that cycle, like if you do an oil drain anyway, it helps because mm -hmm. you kind of start to see fresh lines again. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, the, this, this, which we didn't really get into too much was this annual. I've never done the strainer on that either. You know, to me, from my experience, like for me, what I, I call annually, so we talked about the cost of energy and if the purchase is not operating, you're paying it every day, right. right? Thousands of dollars. So, but, Usually what I would suggest is, you don't always know what it is. And sometimes it's multiple things at the same time and, they, and you chase I your tail. Know. You'll end up chasing your tail because you think it's one thing but it behaves a little bit different than the, the answers the test would tell you. So, so really, I mean, if you really want to get at it, you know, your service is so only in the strainers, replace the check valves, just replace them. I mean, they're not horribly expensive. And if I had a dollar for every time and it ended up being a check valve somewhere, <laughs> I'd be, I wouldn't have to do this today. Um, complete inspect, purge, repair, clean, replace. You know, we have a kit, uh, actually, oh, here it is. We have a, what we call preventive maintenance kit, which will include all the things that you typically would see that need to be repaired or replaced on an annual basis. Not to say that every single thing is going to go wrong every year. But uh, I think we do. Yeah, I think we do. I think we, I, I, it might be online. If it's not online, we can get you a kit. Okay, so that's that's an AP. Yeah. This no, this is an AP kit. You can get that kind of AP feed, just water and air. 
So, so the old one won't remove water. No, no. The no, new one will. It'll remove oil. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we've, we've got some water in our too. And you might want to think about it, right? You might want to think about it. That's not much water. You know you can do a cold flow test? Cold flow test is a way to measure the percent of water in here. That's what he's going to do. That's yeah, it's common. Yeah, we Handling, we've been drinking all Who, Who's doing it for you? Is it a, our, it's, our guy? It's an in-house guy. In -house? Oh, an in-house guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he'll know. He's in company. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, figure out where he's going to take it from. <laughs> because you can get tricked. Because you can get tricked. If he's an experienced guy, he'll know this. Oh, he's a, but you don't, do, you don't take it off the high pressure receiver. No. You got to take it off the lowest. Ideally, the lowest temperature uh, vessel. Yeah. 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 It's not a bad place to do it. You know, kind of old, old, old state. Yeah. Oh, that's the You're getting water on the oil pipes, but that's not what you do your test, right? You do your test. Some some charges some charges that's what we're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you know, right? They should, yeah. They should. Yeah, functioning on the but you know, but the, the thing is, the, 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 you know, like that in that school, the water you can pay out for the water. Well, oh, yeah.